take a couple of good long deep in and out breaths to emphasize the feeling of the breath. And then make up your mind you're going to stay with those sensations, the breathing sensations, as long as you can. You want to get established firmly right here, just the sense of the breath in and of itself. This is part of the practice of establishing mindfulness in the body in and of itself. In other words, you're not going to look at the body in terms of how other people look at it or how it functions in the world, but just what it's like to have a body right here, right now. And don't switch your frame of reference to anything else. If feelings come up, if you notice things in the mind, try to relate everything to your desire to stay with the breath, to be firmly right here. When able to do this, the Buddha says, you've got an island for yourself, an island in the midst of a river, and the river that's flowing quite a lot. There are actually four floods, he says, in the mind, and they come out of what are called effluents. There's sensual passion, there's becoming, views, ignorance. These things are flowing in that river. They come out of a spring that keeps the river well fed. And the eventual purpose of the practice is to put an end to them. But before you can put an end to them, you've just got to learn how to stand firm in the midst of them, because they're going to keep on coming. If sensual desire arises, remind yourself you followed sensual desire, you follow that current for who knows how long. It's one of those rivers that, as the Buddha said, has crocodiles and whirlpools and all kinds of dangers. And whatever means of thinking are needed to keep you from getting snagged on these things, getting carried away by this, this flood of sensual desire, okay, you can engage in that amount of thinking and then get back to your island. Views, views about all kinds of things. And there are right views and there are wrong views. And we have to make use of right views in the path. For right now, you don't have to be thinking too much about that. Simply remind yourself that it's a good thing to be here. You're accomplishing a lot. If you have any doubts about that, you can talk to yourself a bit about why the mind needs training. And when all the big problems in the world come down to the fact that the mind is creating a lot of unnecessary suffering for itself, but it can learn how not to do that. This is how you do it. So whatever problems may be coming up, whatever issues may be coming up, remind yourself, if you're really going to see through those issues, you've got to get the mind really well trained. And that gets you back on your island. Becoming. That's a big one. Essentially, it means taking on an identity in a particular world of experience. You see this when you dream at night. You're drifting off to sleep, all of a sudden this picture of a particular world appears in the mind, and you slip into it and suddenly find yourself playing a role. That's becoming a birth. We may not feel secure in our role as a meditator right now, and so we slip off into other roles. Think about your dealings with other people right now, how you feel about your dealings. All those issues. That's a becoming in the mind. And the mind takes on all kinds of becoming. We're really good at this. It's so good that when we die, we keep it up. Find another becoming. So for the time being, you want to take on the becoming of being on the island. You're going to be the meditator that keeps you on the island and gets you back if you've gotten washed away. And then finally there's the current of ignorance, where we're not really looking at things in terms of stress and the cause of stress, uh, the path is going to lead to the cessation of stress. We're looking, we're thinking in other terms, got other issues. 
and see the world through those other issues. And no matter how much we may know in terms of those other issues, it still counts as ignorance. Not going to wash us away as well. It's to realize that you've got these currents that are running constantly, and it's so easy to fall off the island. You've got to watch out for them. But you have to remember that your real strength comes from staying on the island. You've got a good, solid foundation. Otherwise, it's like trying to walk on water. Even you get those shoes they made years back out of foam that you could walk around on water is pretty unstable. But for most of us, we're not even walking on the water. We're getting just washed away along with all the, all the other debris in those rivers. The only really safe place is right here on the island. When you can stand here, the mind has strength. And when the mind has a strength from concentration, it doesn't have to follow its feelings. Because feelings are part of these currents as well. In other words, our emotions, how we feel about this person, how we feel about that person when we feel like helping, when we don't feel like helping. Those things are totally unreliable. You know, we feel we get some sort of energy out of doing things under the force of our feelings. I was reading a book a while back on positive psychology where the author was talking about how when you go around helping people, the times when you really feel good about it is when you have this spontaneous urge that you want to help. And you notice that more than the cases where you're helping someone regularly. And it sounded like he was advising people, well, don't help anybody regularly, just do it the spur of the moment when the urge hits. And the Buddha does talk about that in terms of generosity, that you act on your sense of being inspired. But he says also there's a higher motivation, which is that you have a sense of duty. You do have your duties in the world. And there are people you have to help. Sometimes you don't feel like helping them, but you want to stick with it. Because if we don't help one another regularly, how are we going to live? So we're going to get the strength to do that when you don't feel like it. You've got the strength from the power of concentration. You learn how to live your life less in terms of your emotions and more in terms of what you, what's really right to do. They talk about how mindfulness and concentration are dependent on virtue. As the Buddha said, the things that foster mindfulness are views made straight and careful virtue. But mindfulness and concentration help with your virtue as well, because they give you this center of strength, this island you can stand on, where you feel secure, where you feel well established. You gain your nourishment from the concentration. The Buddha compares concentration to food. This island is not a barren island. It's well stocked. It grows food. And so instead of having to depend on the currents of your feelings to push you along, you've got good, solid nutrition here the nutrition of conviction that what you do is going to come back at you. So you want to do things well. The nourishment of persistence, sticking with something again and again and again, making good things habitual. The nourishment of mindfulness, concentration, discernment. There are all these good things here on this island in the middle of the flood. So do your best to learn how to stay here on the island, strengthen the island, so it doesn't get washed away. It'll give you the strength you need. It'll give you the sense of security you need, so that your goodness doesn't drown. <laughs>